All right, just started recording. This video is completely uncut. And if you think it's cut, then look for the cuts. Watch it again and again and again. Get me more views. By the end of this video, I hope to explain from my experience, observations, and just doing things, how you can get closer to living your best life. Now, where did I start? Who am I? Why, why have you decided to watch this video? If you're coming from something completely out of nowhere and you don't know who I am, my name is Sev and I am 33 years old. I live in Perth, Western Australia, and I love making videos. I love creating. I love taking photos, I love hanging out with my wife, I enjoy talking with people, I enjoy teaching, and I enjoy living my best life. Sometimes it's stressful, but I feel like it's a life that I came up with that I think is my version of my best life. Now, my journey is still pretty much starting because I really managed to achieve all of this in a small amount of time which is around four years and you're thinking oh no this isn't a quick hacks video I'm not going to get rich tomorrow you're right and if that's what you're looking for then this video is not for you I can't guarantee that you even will live your best life um, because it's not up to me, it's up to you. It's up to you to take action. Now I'll start with what one of my favourite people said to me very recently. It's a riddle. You have three birds on a wire. Two of them make the decision to fly away from the wire. How many birds remain on the wire? I'll give you a couple seconds. Three birds on the wire. Two birds make the decision to leave and fly away from the wire. How many birds are left? Have you got your answer? If you said one bird left, you're wrong. The correct answer is three. The reason why there's still three on the wire is because two of them made the decision to fly away. But they never took action. They never actually flew away. So the over long story short, I can't, be watch, I can't be bothered watching this entire video, is if you don't take action, it's never going to happen for you. You're dreaming, good luck. You can buy a lottery ticket and hope for the best, but 99.999% of you will not get there with that prayer. So how do you actually do it? How do you actually live your best life? Sev, I'm keen, I'm invested. You've got my attention. Great. Let's talk about it. So, for me, this is, I guess you call it week one of we're in, we're in session, right? Now, I'm a school teacher. I'm a former school teacher, but I love educating. So you can still say that I am a school teacher. I want to start my own school. And every part of me wants to do that today. But I'll tell you why I haven't just yet. This is the first video. I haven't done it because this is the first video you'll be watching to hopefully have you on board. You're probably also thinking, especially those of you who've come here from my channels, and to give you a quick rundown, my channels on TikTok, Sev's Picks, 1.6 million followers. Sev's Picks on Instagram, 24,000 followers. YouTube, this channel, 8,000 and counting at the time of recording of this video and I could not give a shit about the number of followers I have because I want more impact. It's the impact that I care about. It doesn't matter how many followers you have, it's the impact and that is my ultimate goal. So how did I start all of this? I migrated from 
Eastern Europe, I don't know if I can say the country because I don't want to get flagged, but read between the lines, you'll get it, you know, the motherland. In 97, couldn't speak a word of English, learnt English, fell in love with the uh, game of Aussie rules football, AFL. Moved to the countryside because my mum's a teacher, where she still lives, and I wish I could retire her yesterday because she's done so much for me. Lived there for my high school years and then decided to chase my dream of becoming an AFL player. Moved back to Perth, got into the state league and hustled as much as I could in my early 20s. Jobs here and there, hating labouring, hating working for someone else and starting my first business as a personal trainer. In a gym, paying overheads to an owner who was completely delusional to then moving out and building the business in my own living room. During the time, I discovered um, that I was really passionate about teaching and wanted to give actual teaching in the classroom a go because my mum being a high school teacher and me having lived the experience through her and obviously as a student myself, I thought, how, can, how hard can it be? And I was convinced um, by my girlfriend at the time that it was a good investment. It's a good investment of my time. And I said, okay, let's give it a go. So shout outs to her for convincing me. And yeah, did that for a bit. <laughs> Achieved it, four years. Graduated in 27 years of age. Picked up the camera halfway through because my football career was up and down. I kept getting injured and I started losing the passion for it. And I couldn't go all in on it because I had other things on my mind like uni, photography, a girlfriend. And I thought, okay, I, my attention is divided. I need to go all in on one or two <laughs> at least. So before I finished uni, I decided to uh, really wrap up the footy game because I got injured and I was sick of it. I, was, I, was, I had enough. And all at the same time, my relationship didn't last. Five-year relationship, done, finished. And also at the same time, my personal training business, it was doing okay. But I wasn't really invested in it anymore. But I started teaching. And I was taking photos in my spare time. And all of a sudden, I had a new chapter. I was alone. I had a new career. I didn't play any more sport. And yeah, I had a passion. And I've always loved making videos. I've always loved taking photos more, more specifically. But I love creating. And I finally saw that I now have the freedom to do whatever I want. Still had to go to work as a teacher. But other than that, I could do whatever I wanted outside of that. It was amazing. It was great. Teaching, taking photos, doing whatever. It was awesome. Four months later, I met my now wife, Sabine. And I didn't think I'd ever find the person for me. Because I had, a, you know, obviously, a, a long, long-term relationship that didn't last. And we were just not the right people for each other. <laughs> but then I found Sabine, met her. And a lot more on that another time. Because I can dedicate a whole episode on this. Probably a whole season on, on uh, how I think... I would, if, if I was single right now, I would, I know exactly what to do when to find the right one for me. But this isn't dating advice. In 2019, I got into uh, some social media stuff because the kids were into it at school and I wanted to learn what tickled their fancy because I wanted to build a rapport with them so I understood what they were thinking about and, you know, opening up the window of learning because they trusted me because I, were, I knew what they were into, you know, rapport. And yeah, that, that's where TikTok came in. 
did really well with it because I already enjoyed creating. And also because I was taking photos, I loved taking portraits of people. And that's where I fell into wedding photography. There's a lot of portraits of people on a wedding day. So started the business. Mind you, I finished up with the personal training business as well. I wasn't playing footy anymore. And all of a sudden I was taking photos and making money from my creative process. And I was just like, wow, you can get paid for your passion. So in 2020, I decided to take one year leave without pay from my school teaching job and go all in on my business. Now, I had no debt because I paid that off. Again, we'll go into debt in another lesson. I also had a bit of savings, just in case. And I also started to invest into index funds, ETFs. Again, another lesson for another day. Obviously, everybody got sick around that time. <laughs> and in 2021, it was still pretty crazy. But fortunately, I was in a, a path, a part of the world where it wasn't too bad. So there's a lot of luck in this. I'm not, I'm not disregarding that there is luck. But it's the fact that I took the chance anyway and stuck to it. When everybody got sick in 2020 and there was lockdowns, I was able to go back to my teaching job. And I actually wanted to go back to my teaching job before everything happened, actually. It was actually a week before because I missed the kids and I wanted to do one or two days a week of relief teaching or substitute teaching. And they offered me a, uh, one class for the rest of the year permanently. And I was like, yeah, that'll do. And then that's when the lockdowns happened. So I managed to pivot back. So uh, there was a safety net. Now, I'm sharing you all of this because it's my story and I want you to find yourself in my story and where you resonate the most and then go from there. Now, um, this may not resonate with you at all because you may not have even started your journey or you may be older than me, but are you living your best life? And I'm going to do what I can from my observations of what I did and what I've seen other people do and not do to help you out. Now, fast forward to mid-2020, almost 2021, I had booked out two years of wedding photography because of my personal brand that I had built on TikTok, unintentionally. I just built my personal brand because I love creating videos and people ask me, what do you do other than teaching? And when I said wedding photography, I started getting bookings. I doubled down on that and I made more money as a photographer, as a creator, in one year than I did as a school teacher, six times over. December 2021, I actually made more money in one month than I did as a school teacher in the whole year. And I worked probably just over 10% of the time to make that money than I would have as a school teacher. And I look back, I'm like, that's insane. That is insane. Now, that's my success story. And I'm not going to regurgitate those exact steps back to you and try to sell your course, because that's what most people do, and it's bullshit. Your story is different. So how can we tailor it to your scenario? Now, going back to my story for a second, what I did there was then I started to get asked by businesses and brands how they can build their brand to then get more bookings, sales, clients, all the rest. And that became part of my career. And now that is the majority of what I do. Then I realized uh, people don't want to be taught how to do things. They want someone to do it for them in business. So I have a production company called Bright Zar Studios. T-S-A-R, Bright Zar Studios, or BTS for short. And that's just a fresh chapter in my life, and I'll get to that later on. So without going too far longer in this one video, and I can, I can talk a lot. <laughs> I love talking. I love hearing the sound of my own voice, you know. I want you guys to get some, you know, value out of this video. If you're inspired and motivated already, great. But remember, 
those two birds that were inspired and make it and made a decision to leave the wire they're still on that wire because they didn't take action so now i want you to take action what can you do between now and the next video of mine to get closer to your dream life not your dream career not your dream job but your version of what your best life looks like and here's where i feel i can help based off of my observations and personal experiences where do you want to be at the end of it all obviously you want to be rich um, most people i ask this question to they all want to be rich okay cool what does rich mean so you got to define what it means to you to be rich most of you will say having lots of money in the bank great awesome write that down but the next question i want you to answer for me is how would you like to get rich now we can't say winning the lottery because like i said 99.999% of you will not achieve this how would you like to earn the money that makes you rich is it possible for absolutely everybody like i said i was able to make money six times more than what i thought my dream career was which was school teaching in one year after leaving school because i followed my passion and figured out the business side of things there was luck but there was grit and there was pivoting and we'll talk all about that later on so question 1 what does your best life look like and how do you envision so far to get there right so we are i'm asking you a question on both sides so what first question what's your best life look like so we're at the end and how do we get there start from wherever you want i normally start from the end and work backwards but we'll do that in the second video the third question is where would you like to be the most if there was nowhere for you to be which means if you could be anywhere in the world doing something specific and not worry about what else is happening in your life or have to be in a meeting or have to leave or whatever else is happening in your life what would what would you where would you be and what would you be doing right kind of the same as the first question but the first question is kind of like a if you could make money what would you love to be doing to be able to make that money if you're not answering the rich question i hope it makes sense but let's recap one more time question 1 what does your best life look like number 2 how would you like to achieve that what's your career of choice business whatever and thirdly what is the thing where is the thing you, where would you like to be if you had nowhere to be and that's it i hope this has helped this is just the start right so we're going to dream dream with me and then the next video if it's up now because you're looking at this 3 4 10 years from now cool slide over and go watch that but if you discover this video in April of 2024 welcome subscribe and all the rest and enjoy the journey and please leave your answers in the comments would love to see them and uh, feature some of you because the ones that are featured in the videos they're there forever because these videos are going to stay up and not only that this is my week 1 because where i'm at currently with my production company is just the beginning where bringing on clients to help them with their content or visual assets and it's so much fun it's my company i have a partner in it 
and I'm getting paid a salary that's not huge, but it's nice. But I get paid to build something that means a lot to me, which is exciting. And I've got a few other things that are happening that are also exciting. Collaborating with cool brands, doing those things. But that's my life right now. To answer the questions that you're about to write, or if you haven't written them already, my answer is ultimate living my best life is waking up obviously that's already a blessing having a coffee with my wife hanging out with the dogs and eventually the kids and then doing whatever 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 it is not doing nothing or sleeping or by the side of the pool with a cocktail (laughs) that will happen too but Ultimately, every day, I would love to take my camera somewhere, take photos of the world, dogs, birds, sunrise, sunset, the ocean, animals, people, and talk to people. And that answers the third question. Where would I be if I had nowhere to be? I'd be talking to people to hear their story, documenting it and sharing it with the world. And not caring about monetization or followers or views at all because you just be doing that. But most most importantly, helping the kids, you guys, because the kids are the future. And I'd love to be a really um, cool and but meaningful role model for you guys. And I have every opportunity for the momentum that I have. How would I make my money and how would I achieve this dream? Well, I'm doing it. How am I doing it? That's what we're going to talk about. But in short, if you don't feel like this resonated with you, but you're still here, which I think, I am doing it by not just ensuring that I'm making money doing the things I love, but I'm also ensuring that I'm doing things I need to get to that stage. It's, it's like a, a stepping stone. Like I know I don't want to create content for other businesses for the rest of my life. I know I don't want to become a 30-year wedding photography veteran. I know I don't want to do that forever. What I do want to do forever right now, because that also changes, is helping people more specifically helping the younger generations learn how they can prime themselves to live their best life. That's my ultimate. How am I doing that now? By creating content for other people. Once the exits come in, we'll talk about exits as well. I feel like I can't talk about exits yet because I haven't achieved it, but I'm getting there. My week one towards my exit is sharing my story but also sharing my process and as someone who wishes that I had this advice at the age of 15 I'm talking to my 15 year old self here this is pretty much the exact advice I'd give myself um, to my 15 year old self I'd also give this exact advice to my 45 year old self if I all of a sudden realized that the job that I was doing every day was not fulfilling and I hated it and I wanted out, but I felt like there was no other way. This is the advice I would give that 45-year-old self. And any age group for that matter who doesn't feel like they're living their best life at all and could do better but just doesn't know how, this is the advice. Thank you for watching. I look forward to hearing from you. And I'm not doing this for viewers. I'm not doing this for subscribers. I'm doing this to put a point of time, like a time capsule in my life to go, all right, I finally started sharing it properly. Long form content. (laughs) Maybe clips of it as well. But the Sevo show here, Along with my red mic, I'm stoked to be here and thank you for watching if you are. Lights out, check out this dim, ready? It was a bit dramatic. All right, see you guys.